So we're going to attempt to answer this question um, uh, for a given scenario. And the question um, that we want to answer looks something like this. Let me push this aside a little bit. Let's say that a couple is going to have three kids. And those three kids um, could be some number of a uh, combination of genders. It could be boy, boy, girl. It could be boy, boy, boy. It could be girl, boy, boy. Right? We could continue on with this. So these three kids that this couple will have some number of combinations. So given that there could be any number of combinations, um, what we'd like to know is what are all of the possible ways that this couple might um, might have, for example, let's choose um, two boys and one girl. Right? Given that they have three kids, what are the possible, like how many different ways can they have two boys and three girls? Um, and given that they can have two boys and three girls out of their three kids some number of ways right whatever that number is we want and then out of all of the possibilities um, we could figure out then the probability of having um, uh, two girls or sorry two boys and one girl so let's think about this. We want to first be able to count and, and largely or quite often when it comes to probability we're concerned with counting. How many ways a particular event, a random event, can happen. Because um, when we have our three kids we don't know in particular um, exactly what that sequence will be. If it'll be all girls, all boys, or etc. So it is a random event and in order to be able to consider random events and and evaluate them and figure out probabilities we need to be able to count. So the fundamental principle of counting will come in handy here. And then um, once we can count um, we'd like to be able to use um, the simple multiplication rule and the simple addition rule to um, calculate probabilities for certain events happening. Um, if you recall the simple multiplication rule simply said the probability of A and event B occurring is the probability of A times uh, the probability of event B happening in the simple, right? And then the simple addition rule. Well, let me first and um, and and one example that we used was the probability of getting throwing two die, one red, one green. Um, the probability of throwing a one on the first die was one six, and the probability of throwing a one on the second die was 1 6 and the probability of those two events those two independent events occurring was the product of those and that was a 1 over 36 um, and so um, when we pulled out our table that had dice um, um, explored and the number of ways we can combine dice we were able to see that there was one way that we could end up with uh, throwing a two, right? A two, a sum of twos when the first die is a one, the second die is a one, and there was only one out of the total of 36. Um, so that is our simple multiplication rule, right? If there is an and, quite often it means that we're multiplying. The simple addition rule. Um, looked like this, the probability of random event A happening or random event B occurring is the probability of random 
event A plus random event B. So there was that connection um, to addition when looking at one event or the other occurring. And our example that we looked at before that highlighted this was when we looked at um, uh, rolling um, rolling dice. I think the example that I gave you was um, something like what's the probability of rolling those two dice and getting a sum equal to two or a sum equal to um, three. And when we, if you go back and look at your table, um, when we enumerated or listed all of the possibilities um, that we could come up with when dealing with or rolling those two dice, um, one, two, three, etc., um, we were able to um, consider the various sums. So getting a sum of two or getting a sum of three came when we had um, these two dice that were thrown and getting a sum of four was when you might throw a, a green one, a green three and a red one or a green two and a red two or throwing a green one and a red one, right? So we did a table that, that looked like this in, in more detail. And there were 36 possibilities, right? There were um, 36 possible um, combinations um, that, that we consider 36 possible outcomes. Um, and that's six by six the six options for one die and six options for the other totus uh, gave us 36 different options. Now the probability of getting that sum of a three, a two or a three, um, corresponded to just simply being able to count the number of ways we could get a two or a three. And we could look at that and see that there were three out of 36 ways that we could get a three out of 36. Um, the other way of thinking about this is that since it's a sum um, of two or a sum of three, we could just simply look at the probability of getting a sum equal to two and uh, look at this as a addition. So the probability of getting a sum equal to two was one out of 36. And the probability of getting a sum equal to three was two out of 36. And then those two together were what we were considering. And there were three ways um, that we could get that sum of two or three, or we could add those two probabilities together. So those were the, the two basic rules that we looked at, um, or the three, the fundamental principle of counting. Um, I'll say a little bit more about in a second, but the simple multiplication rule and the simple addition rule. Now, um, if you recall that for the fundamental principle of counting, um, we found it convenient to use um, this format here. Let's uh, a branch, a, a table, a, a graph of a graph essentially. So, um, if a couple is going to have a child, that child could be a boy, or that child could be a girl, and that's for that. Right, let's uh, mark it like this. So those are the only two options for one child. It's going to be a boy or a girl. 
generally speaking. Now once they have that boy, if they have a boy, they could have another child and then that child could be a boy or a girl. So if they end up having a boy and then a second boy, then what we're looking at is that outcome. If they have a boy and then a girl, what we're looking at is another outcome. Or if their first child is a girl and their second child is a boy, um, then um, the final outcome is they had a girl and then they had a boy. And finally, if they had a girl and then another girl, the final outcome is two girls. So the total number of um, outcomes that are possible um, can be determined by um, the fundamental principle of counting, which says, let's say that an event can happen one of two ways, and then the second event can happen one of two ways. The total number of ways those two events can happen would be two times two, or four different um, kind of outcomes. So the fundamental principle of counting was a tool that was used to, to help us count. Now, what we'd like to do is go back to trying to answer this question of, um, given that they're going to have three kids, what we want to know is what's the, the, the probability of having two boys and three girls and for that I'm sorry two boys and one girl right they're gonna have three kids two boys and one girl and we indicated that two boys one girl there or two boys one girl there would be considered the same outcome right so order doesn't matter So if this couple is going to have um, three kids, then um, if they have one kid, there are two ways to um, two two um, two options for their gender of that child, and then when they have a second child, there are going to be two options, and when they have a third child there are two options. So you would expect there to be eight different outcomes, eight total outcomes for having three kids. So let's go ahead and take a few seconds and let's um, list all of those outcomes. And so to do that, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here to, to complete this table. So this couple, again, is going to have three kids. And so now, if we consider that there's a third child, um, they could have a boy, a boy, and then that third child could be either a boy or a girl. Or they could have a boy or girl, and again, that third child could be either a boy or a girl. And if we continue with this diagram here, we're able to list all of the possibilities. So if they have three kids, they're going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight possible outcomes. The first um, possible outcome would be would be having a boy, a boy, and a boy. The second one would be if they were to have a boy, a boy, and then a girl. 
third option we can list here boy girl boy let's go with the fourth option boy girl 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 boy boy and then um, these last three girl girl boy girl 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 so those are our eight possible options right um, and so if they have eight kid if they have three kids it can only be option a b c d e f g it can only be one of those outcomes so the question that was asked was um, if they have those three kids what's the probability of having two boys and one girl so let's do a quick count how many scenarios do we see where there are two boys and one girl um, so that would mean two boys and one girl there right and there there and that's it So they can, there are only three ways, three options, three outcomes where, they're, uh, where they have two boys, exactly two boys, and one girl. Um, so the question um, certainly can, could have been presented as um, having two boys, exactly, or having two boys and one girl. And it, if we look at this, out of all of the possible uh, possibilities um, there are exactly three ways that they could have um, exactly two boys or two boys and a girl and out of all of the possibilities it looks like there are eight um, right if we do the count through here it's eight so three eighths is the answer, or zero point three seven five. Um, so that is one simple example of using some of those, uh, some of the basic rules of, of probability. Um, next, we're going to use what we've learned here to um, to generalize this to other scenarios um, so even though we were talking about having a boy or a girl um, we could also talk about either someone shoots a three a free throw and it's either um, a success or it's a failure um, or it's a make or a miss right there's several ways of kind of expressing this situation or it's it's very similar though to having a boy or a girl um, but there are two outcomes and um, they're directly if it can only be one of two outcomes um, so this is our, our our kind of generalized look at this. I mean, we've looked at boy and girl, but it certainly could have been in terms of free throws um, or some event where it could be one thing or another. So those scenarios that we're talking about um, are considered um, Bernoulli. Um, Bernoulli events or binomial scenarios. So we'll we'll see more about, uh, with that a little bit later.